Hey everyone, welcome back to the Out of Spec Podcast. I'm your host, Francie, and today I had fun. I sat down with Ryan and Lacey, one of the teams that raced to Vegas with the Out of Spec crew from Fort Collins to, of course, Las Vegas, Nevada. They took the Tesla Model X, the first three-row SUV to come onto the market, fully electric, three-row SUV, seven passengers, now we know that there's other options because the race to Vegas included the Rivian R1S, the Model X, the Mercedes EQS, and the Kia EV9. But Ryan and Lacey were a fun pair. Lacey had never been on a long EV road trip before, whereas Ryan definitely has, and in a Tesla. So they had a fun dynamic. So let's plug in for all the details to hear about exactly how they did on the race, but also their perspective of not only racing there, but coming back and only using the Tesla route planner. Okay. Let's plug in. This episode is made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out of spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. Okay, everyone, like I said, this was Lacey's first long-term EV road trip. So it was really fun to watch uh, she and Ryan as they raced to Vegas because she was very curious, had amazing questions as really everyone I talked to was curious about EVs, but might not know a lot. They have great questions. So it's so fun to be able to answer those questions. And Ryan has a lot of experience, not only with electric vehicles, but with Teslas as well. He has a Model 3. So they got to have a fun, like, informative, educational, curious dynamic and race the Model X. So like I said, the Model X was the first three row SUV to come onto the market. Of course, there are other options now, but it's a bit of a luxury. The one that they got to take to Vegas was the long range with the aerodynamic wheels. So that was in their favor. They also had the highest peak charging speed of 250 kilowatts. It only holds it for a short amount of time, but hey, better than nothing. And of course, they had the advantage of being able to use the supercharger network with the Rivian R1 did as well. And the Tesla, they had a CCS adapter. So if they came across an Electrify America, EVgo, what have you that they wanted to use, they would be able to do that. It's a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, pretty big. And this one is three row capable, but it came from a viewer and it doesn't have that third row, but technically it could be. So, you know, we work with what we got. I want to just quickly show you the Tesla website for the Model X because you might be curious. Like I said, it's it's luxury. You know, it's priced as a at an MSRP of sixty five, almost sixty six thousand dollars, an EPA estimated range of three hundred twenty six miles. I'm sure that's the best one. And generally, I think it's pretty cool. It's got those doors that rise up from the side, Falcon doors, and it's a pretty luxurious, nice, big seater. They were the ones that carried the cooler with all the snacks because they had room. So it's it's priced still competitively amongst the other luxury ex- lug- luxury electric SUVs that are available right now. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good one to have. I think if I had to choose one, that one would definitely be on the top just to really be able to experience the big Tesla uh, road trip. Okay, so let's plug in with now Lacey and Ryan to hear all about their trip. Okay, everyone, I'm joined by Team X, the team that drove the Model S, Tesla Model X from Colorado to Las Vegas, Nevada, Nevada, and back again. And it is Ryan and Lacey. Welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. Both of you, you've been here before. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having us. It's great to be here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Ryan, I know that you were really excited to do a race to Vegas again. So I'm sure you were like ready, rip roar and ready to go. Um, Is that right? Were you just like, yeah, no doubt I'm going on this. Of course, Uh, if if I have the opportunity, definitely going to take it. It's always so much fun uh, every single time we do it. So really happy that I was able to join on this one. And you've road tripped your Tesla Model 3 a lot. So you're pretty familiar with not only EV road trips, but Tesla road trips, right? Definitely, yeah. So I, I owned a Model 3 and plenty of road trips, almost 20,000 miles. And yeah, a lot of experience uh, with both Tesla and non-Tesla road, road tripping. But if I were to choose, definitely Tesla is a, uh, a better way to go. Yeah, it's it's good, I think, for anyone to get a 
a back to back or a you know a side by side CCS versus Tesla road trip and Lacey, you have done some stuff with out of spec reviews with out of spec podcast you uh you have a Nissan Aria that you drive yourself but yeah how did you get roped into the race to Vegas excursion how did I get roped in I think <laughs> Kyle just sent me a, a Snapchat and it said do you want to go on an adventure? And I feel like, yeah, the rest is history. I was like, I absolutely do. I am. I'm lucky enough to have a really cool boss who let me do this instead of working. I of course had to make up for all the tasks that I was missing out on, but yeah, it was just a quick little Snapchat. And I was like, yeah, that actually sounds like a lot of fun. I like to go to Vegas and never been in a road trip. So this would really benefit me and what I do, it would help me have that experience so I can tell other people about it. Yeah. Will you tell me just a little bit about what you, what you do do, what you're referring to? Yeah. So I work for a nonprofit called Drive Clean Colorado, and we're super big on promoting clean transportation. There is a big focus on electric vehicles, but we do all sorts of clean transportation, um, all sorts of um, alternative fuels, biofuels, um, but mainly what I do is just pretty heavily focused on EVs and we have a bunch of different contracts that we work on, um, like federal contracts, state contracts, and all we do is just kind of promote cleaner transportation so that we can have better air quality, which is especially important right now. Um, looking outside my window, I can barely see the mountains and it's really cool to have this kind of impact on the industry because a lot of people are interested in the technology but i'm really interested in it for the technology but also for the environmental benefits mm -hmm. super cool yeah i think it's great like you can look at the research you can take the information and uh, like have the credit credibility to be a proponent of evs but also to get in a road trip and experience that is is eye-opening you might be able to read about it but then you experience it you learn more about evs because it's a bit of a different technology and all of that so i'm glad you had this opportunity but had y'all met before you were just paired up and then given a tesla model x yeah first i think meeting, yeah. first time meeting for sure the day um that we met at the powerhouse um i think at first i didn't have anyone paired with me and so I was just like, Kyle, who the heck am I riding with? And then I had actually emailed Ryan when I first started this job, when I first got introduced to Out of Spec, I was trying to coordinate an event with you and Kyle, which ended up not working out, I think due to weather. So we had kind of met virtually, but this was the first time in person getting to know each other. Yeah, get in a car and just sit next to each other for the next two days, <laughs> get, get to know each other. How <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so how did you start like, okay, so first, in case anyone's not familiar, Race to Vegas is that it's racing to Vegas. So they had the Tesla Model X, the Mercedes EQS, right? EQS, okay. SUV. SUV, and then the Rivian R1S, which is an SUV, and the uh, Kia EV9, which is an SUV. So it was all the SUV, the you know family car, electric options. And yeah, you had the the Model X, which is definitely different from the others. The others are CCS. Technically, Rivian has access to some of the supercharger network, but it's still, you know, a little bit of a different technology. So you were paired up, you were given the Tesla, and then you had to race to start off. So what were you just like, okay, well, we know the Tesla route planning is pretty good. We're just going to trust that. Or like, how did you approach the race the first day? Um, yeah, I can I can answer that one. Um, it was uh, it's something that I'm pretty familiar with. I've done the race to Vegas. I've also done done that route from Colorado down to Vegas, that area, and I have family out in California, so really familiar with that route. All the different chargers, and there's a lot of different options. So I had a pretty good idea of where I would want to stop and what would be the best stops. Um, but basically, I, I wanted to make it as far as I could uh, with my first initial charge uh, and then try to get a good charge uh, at the first stop. Uh, and I knew parachute is a very good option for us, uh, just as far as right off the highway, 250 kilowatts, and a lot of the Grand Junction chargers are uh, a lot further off the highway. So a bit, uh, a bit of a, a no-brainer right there. And just kind of using my experience, knowing how uh, how much energy is needed, 
using a better route planner uh, as well as the Tesla route planner and just mm. kind of judging which would be the best options. Um, for the most part, the Tesla route planner is really solid. There's very few things that we changed uh, as opposed to just following it directly. On the way out there, we in Green River, we stopped at a uh, Electrify America instead of a Tesla supercharger. That was because uh, you are able to get a little bit faster speeds at the Electrify America than the Tesla supercharger at that specific location. But beyond that, it, it was really quite straightforward. It gave us a really good estimate of when we were going to arrive uh, at our chart at uh, the next destination. And the uh, estimated state of charge on arrival was a bit optimistic. Uh, however, we were going 10 over the speed limit. So it made a lot of sense as far as trying to figure everything out. But for the most part, it was really quite straightforward and the software really made it a, a lot easier. Yeah, um, Ryan is the expert on this, so I really just had to show up. Um, <laughs> the only benefit um, I guess I could provide was, um, I guess, local knowledge. Um, so I knew kind of like the best route, at least I thought I did know the best route to get out of the powerhouse. We unfortunately did get stuck behind the train. Um, but I saw that. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was all Ryan. So, yeah, I think... We had a really good setup with that from his experience uh, driving a Tesla and road tripping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd love to hear more about that too, Lacey, of, okay, Ryan like has this kind of technical expertise. Not only he's driven Tesla, but you've you've worked with EVs for a while now. And, and then what you learned about road tripping an electric vehicle that is different, not only from maybe your Aria, you know, Tesla to to the Nissan Aria, but also road tripping an EV um, and what you need to consider. But also it, it's kind of like you did a, a very quick class on it, like high pressure because you're racing. So you really were learning about the little technicalities that make a difference in charging, you know, in the charging curve and showing up at a low state of charge. So is there anything surprising along the race there that um, you remember learning about that kind of enlightened you on the, the tech that's in EVs? Yeah, just the charging curve. Um, I talked about this with my coworker after she watched this video. I had no idea that there was a charging curve. I thought, oh, like there's a supercharger that can charge up to 250 kilowatts. So that's how fast it'll charge the whole time. When that is absolutely not correct. It actually knocks it down um, pretty quickly once you get to like 35, 40%. Um, it, I feel like it knocked it down by like 100 kilowatts sometimes, and that was extremely surprising. So it's kind of misleading when you hear the charging speeds because that's not really true. There's a lot of factors involved. Sometimes the heat is involved, other environmental factors. So that was the biggest thing, and I feel like that's a really important consideration for people that go on road trips in an EV is the charging curve. Mm -hmm. Like an EV 101 class like a quick one would be helpful for everyone. Cause yeah, you hear the peak charging speed that technically that charger could do in, in perfect conditions, which as you were saying, have a lot of different factors. So that's definitely something where you're like, oh, battery chemistry is battery technology, charging technology. This is a bit more complicated and you don't necessarily have to know about it if you don't want to. Like if you have a Tesla telling you exactly how much you need to charge to get to your next stop and stuff like that, but it is, Great to know, especially in your line of work and also just being able to, I think, also take that information and communicate it to someone else who wants to get an EV or anything like that. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, with the with the route planner, did you, I mean, you said that you were using a mix of a better route planner and then like the Tesla supercharger. But when you got to the charging stations, what I've noticed from Tesla charging versus CCS charging is that you just plug it in and it works right away. No problem on the supercharger network. Generally, CCS, you have to start the charge. You have to initiate it. There's not usually plug and charge at this point in time. How is the supercharger network? Certainly Ryan. better than uh, my experience with CCS. Uh, we, we did experience our fair share of problems. We had uh, a supercharger with a broken pin. Uh, one time we pulled into uh, the wrong uh, stall and we're accidentally sharing power with someone near us. Uh, mm -hmm. Just some small stuff. And then uh, we definitely had a lot of experiences where we didn't quite see exactly 250 kilowatts uh, for whatever reason. And we weren't always able to figure it out. But 
uh, for the most part, it was a really positive experience. It worked out really well. It's really simple, really easy, pretty foolproof. Um, overall, really positive experience, especially when you compare it to some of the uh, experiences that you can can have with CCS. Yeah, um, it was it was a great experience with these with this Tesla supercharger network. There was um, like one or two times we pulled up to a station and. I plugged it in, but it still wasn't charging. So then he moved to like another stall and that one still wasn't working. Um, but then it, it did work, I think when he plugged it in. So it could have been user <laughs> error, um, but <laughs> the owner was getting notified that the charging session wasn't working. And so I'm not sure exactly what it was. And so he gave us some little tips on like, like be a little bit more forceful, I guess, when you first put it in. Um, so after that, we didn't really have any issues. And then sometimes um, at the end of the charging session, it would take a while to process the charge and signal that we could take the cord out. Um, and when I say a while, I mean like maybe up to 30 seconds, but it's like, it's processing it, it's processing it and we're trying to race and we're like, come on, we need to go, but we need you to tell me that I can like unplug you. So those were the only issues, but I don't think it was anything compared to the other CCS stations. Yeah, because you've been on the podcast before, too, and you've told me about some experience with your niece on Aria where you've gotten locked in to a, a CCS charger where you actually could not disconnect because of this ongoing issue with Nissan Aria chargers. So, yeah, I, I mean, what are your standards now compared to co compared to that? Well, I think my first experience driving an EV was the Tesla. And so I was already used to the supercharger network. And when I first got the Aria and actually had to try the CCS network connectors, um, it was very different. And it was not very, it was not a good experience. I was, I was stuck and I was in a blizzard and it's just very incomparable to the Tesla superchargers. Mm. Yeah, that's a bummer. Um, I hope that never happens to you again. Uh, Thank <laughs> definitely. You. <laughs> and where did y'all come in place on the race to Vegas? Number one. First asterisk. <laughs> asterisk. <laughs> on the way okay, out there, uh, uh -huh. when we arrived, we uh, I accidentally took us to the wrong uh, parking garage. We were directed in circles a few times, and we ended up making it to the correct parking garage about 30 or 45 seconds after uh, Kyle and Drew. However, uh, in actuality, when we arrived at the first parking garage, we were about 10 minutes ahead of them. So I like to say the Model X won, but Kyle and Drew uh, team uh, got the win. Technicality. Technicality. Yeah, very, right? very much a technicality, but the, the Tesla performed extraordinarily well and, and definitely deserved the win, both on the way out there and on the way back. Interesting. Yeah, and we'll get into the way back, but I also want to hear about what did you think of the lineup of who came in next? Like, Were you surprised to have the Mercedes right after you? Did you expect the Rivian or the EV9? Uh, I, I'm uh, not too surprised. I thought that the uh, Mercedes would be a little bit further behind, but it was about 10 minutes behind, which was really quite close, almost within the noise. Uh, like, I think if we were to do that race 10 times, they'd win a few of the times probably. Mm. Um, yeah, I, Kyle... I wasn't too surprised. Oh, go ahead. Well, Kyle behind the wheel saying like no air conditioning and Drew was telling me that he's like, I think I lost a few brain cells that day because it was so hot. We weren't allowed to run the air conditioning trying to race. So, um, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think it, other than that, it was, it was pretty much what I expected uh, just as far as everyone coming in. Uh, I think overall though, like everyone was within about an hour of each other. It was really quite close. And even the slowest car really did quite well, and I was I was impressed overall. Really, every car that we had did did very well. Cool, that's that's good. Yeah, I think no car really was um, quite like that far behind. We've seen some races that we've done where folks have been like quite far behind due to other. Uh, I mean, a lot of reasons, and I won't call anyone out. Um, but yeah, we've had some trailers before. But then, okay, so on the race there, you were, well, you were racing and you were doing a lot of work as the driver, you know, you were doing your planning, you were making sure to optimize things all along the way. 
on the way back. Tell me, Lacey, what were the circumstances there? Were you racing back to Colorado or what? Yeah, it was all up to the route planner. So we had no say really in what we could do. We had to listen to it to the T. So that's probably what I would have done on the race there since I don't really have any experience or expertise on road tripping. So on the way back, if it told you to go to a certain station that didn't make any sense, you still had to go there. And I think at one point it rerouted us uh, once or twice, but for us in the Tesla, we had a really good route planner. It seemed like it worked out pretty well, um, but yeah, it was just the route planner and that's it. So it, it was kind of a race still, but just based on the route planner. Yeah. Based on their software. Did you, I mean, I uh, just drove the out of spec Tesla model three with 145, now 146,000 miles on it. Uh, old one and um old comparatively right it's not from 1995 or anything but uh i did find that the route planning was really great but at one point it did suggest that i between a long stretch stop at a supercharger for five minutes to carry on and i was like i'm just gonna not do that i'm just gonna drive a little bit slower or show up at a very low state of charge but did it do anything like that where you were like okay well i guess we have to follow along now Ryan? No. Um, so when we actually first uh, put in the destination as the uh, the campus office, uh, the first charging stop was Cedar City, which was quite uh, pretty close instead of going to Beaver, which is about 200 miles. Um, and that's Beaver is where I would stop because on your first charge, you have 100% state of charge. You want to use as much as possible. And we'd be pulling into Cedar City with like 25, 30% state of charge. So not really needed. Uh, but when we were about 30 minutes away from Cedar City, it recalculated and said, hey, you can make it to Beaver. Let's go there. So it automatically did exactly what I was going to do. And pretty much for the entire way out there, it did exactly what I would have done. Uh, save for I might have unplugged one or two minutes earlier than the route planner said. And then in Green River, there's the V2 supercharger, which it took, uh, brought us to. However, you can get slightly faster speeds at the Electrify America. So I would have tried that, see if it's open. But really beyond that, it was pretty much flawless and pretty much exactly what I would do as what I would consider a pretty experienced road tripper who uh, is really good at maximizing those vehicles. I, if if we were to remove the restrictions that we had of following the route planner, I think we could have saved maybe 10 minutes. Maybe. Hmm. Wow. So all they need to do is take Ryan's brain and put it in all of the Teslas, and then the route planner will be perfect. <laughs> exactly. It's quite impressive. They, they've done a really great job. That's Yeah, I think they really have. And seeing it with the long... I've been on Tesla road trips before, but they haven't been that long. But coming from... Colorado to Tennessee, it was so much easier. And a lot of factors play in that, you know, it's doing this calculation, it's getting you there at a low state of charge, which we love. And then of course it just starts charging right away. So all of that I think really contributes to the Tesla road tripping to be pretty, pretty top of the line. And I know a lot of people don't like to hear that, but it, it's fine. I mean, someone equated it to like driving with Tesla is like driving with the GPS and driving CCS is like driving with an Atlas. So you have to do a little bit more planning. You're still going to get there, but you might have to do a little bit more work along the way. But I don't think it's it's really that bad. I think no matter what, you can get somewhere in an EV, and it's it's pretty pretty good. And I want to ask you about like the comfort of the Model X. So this is the biggest, well, unless you consider the Cybertruck, but this is like the biggest Tesla that you can get. It's got the the doors that come up the, the sides like this. You know, it's got the space. But uh, Lacey, what did you think about the comfort? of the Tesla. What did you like about it? What didn't you like as a driver? Yeah. So one thing that I really liked about it was just like the overall feeling. Like right when I got in, right when we started on the road trip, um, I was excited. I was like, this is nice. We have a cooler in the back, cozy seats. It's super awesome. Um, some things that I didn't like about it were the automatic doors. And I think Ryan hinted to this in one of the videos. So they're like automatic. You can open and close it from the app and you can definitely feel like the mechanics in it. So when you first open it, you have to like you start to open it and then you have to like push really hard and then it's just like a door. So um, that was a bit of a hassle. Um, the biggest thing that Ryan and I really don't like about it is 
the lack of stocks, the turn signal stocks. So the whole time you have to like press a button with like your left hand. And with that, I felt like I was a little distracted. I had to keep like looking for where it is. And there's like a little nub on it so you can feel where it is. But I was still, it was like another thing that was like a slight distraction when I'm used to just like flipping a knob up and down. Um, mm -hmm. Also, I feel like this might just be me, but I feel like the sound system wasn't as good as I remembered in the Tesla. So we were kind of playing around with those settings a little bit. Um, Cause you know, we just love to blast music and I love to scream sing. And so <laughs> it's really nice when the, when the music plays a little bit louder than I can sing. Um, but the sound system was still not bad. It was still a really good sound system. Um, also the cruise control, it, slowed down around the curves so some of the like for some of the route there was really strong curves and when you're going 10 over the speed limit um it kind of feels like you're like really getting tugged and the cruise control really doesn't like that so it slows down on purpose and the whole time i had to like keep it at the same speed and maintain the speed um so that was a little interesting i'm not sure if the other cars had to deal with that um but yeah, there was just really those things, like just a few little nitpicky things. Overall, it was really an awesome experience in the Tesla. Ryan, what do you think? Do you echo any of that? Did you like other things? Did you dislike other things? Yeah, uh, a few things that I wanted to echo. The turn stocks, uh, lack of turn uh, signal stocks is really frustrating. Did not enjoy that at all. But for the most part, it's it's really pretty comfortable. It's a nice place to be. Um, I've definitely been in uh, cars that are nicer for ninety thousand dollars, but it's still a nice, a nice place. Cooled seats. The sound system's good, not great, um, and overall, yeah, an enjoyable place to spend time. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely vehicles that I think are more luxurious. Um, however, yeah, I, we spent thirteen hours in that pretty much two days in a row, and not really sore. Our legs weren't tired. Overall pretty comfortable a good place to be hmm. even with the scream singing going on you really got to know each other <laughs> it was okay it was we made okay. it. <laughs> i did love watching y'all yeah because it was like um with ryan you knowing a, a good bit about this and the technical stuff and being able to explain that articulately and then lacy with your curiosity about it all i felt like y'all were really fun to watch your interaction. So um, I, I do hope to be a part of one too. And I see comments all the time, Lacey, about like, get Lacey and Francie in a car. And yeah, oh, yeah, we got to have a chick race or whatever it is. I'd be so down for that. So Kyle, hopefully you're listening to this and you can set that up for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. Have Miss Go Electric, maybe Liv from Maki vlog, who knows? Anyways, um, so I want to ask you about like your main takeaways for like an EV road tripper. I mean, Lacey, your your job is to, you know, try to be a proponent of more clean tech tech in general, and of course, transportation. And then Ryan, I mean, you have plenty of experience, so you have that as well. I don't know if you learned anything really that new, but maybe we'll start with Lacey. Like your takeaways, your lessons learned from not only a race, but then like a full involved EV route planning following on the way back? Yeah, biggest takeaway slash piece of advice is get to know your car. Um, the charging curves are different for each car. They're pretty drastically different. Some of them charge at the same speed for like up to 80% and some of them uh, derate uh, at such a low percentage. So definitely uh, exper experiment with what your car's capabilities are. Um, so that's like the main thing, getting to know it. Um, I know I had another one, but I forgot. Um, yeah, I'll pass it off to Ryan in case I remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it for me, it really reinforced a lot of the strengths that Tesla has. It made me more excited that a lot of manufacturers are going to have access to the Tesla supercharger network. Um, and also, yes, I think uh, all the other vehicles encountered various problems at all of the chargers. However, they all made it and for the most part, it wasn't all that terrible. And we've had a lot worse experiences on CCS network. So I was, I was pleasantly surprised, even though it was over 100 degrees, middle of summer, and you know, could have been a lot worse. Overall, 
even for the CCS vehicles, it really wasn't that bad. And yes, it does take a little bit of planning, but for the most part, I, you can do that that trip 800 miles from uh, Fort Collins to Las Vegas. And I think most people would be able to feasibly do that in a day. Hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I do remember what I wanted to say. So the Come. biggest... The biggest light bulb, I guess, that turned on for me is really understanding the significance of out of spec. You guys create like all the data. So when you guys are talking about charging speeds and you're throwing out numbers, I'm like, oh, they just looked at it online. Like it says it somewhere in the manual. Like, no, you guys went, you go, you have these experiences. This is your data. These are your experiments. This is science, honestly. And so I didn't really understand that. And like you, um, Ryan, I, I remember asking you, like, how did you know Tesla had an indicated speed limit of 85, but it's actually 84. And you were like, oh, well, that's what they said in the chat. They said, it sounds like, or it looks like you guys are going 84 when we're going 85. Um, and so I was like, oh my gosh. So that's when you knew, like, I thought that's something that would be online somewhere and you guys just knew about it and you did your research, but there's no real research involved. It's all experimental. So that was the really like cool, um, realization that I came to on this whole trip. And you got to be a part of it. I think that is, uh, it is cool. You know, a lot of this is new and we're exploring it for the first time. So yeah, we use like an actual GPS to figure out how many miles per hour we're going compared to what the car reads. Like that is attention to detail. And I think that is something that is really fun over here at Out of Spec. And anyone who comes on any kind of trip will, will be able to see that too. Cause a lot of what's happening is going on for the first time you know, and uh, it's pretty cool. So I'm glad you got to be a part of it, Lacey, and take it away. I'm sure it's like going to benefit you in your job as an AV driver, as just a human on earth. I think it's really cool to know more and more about this part of our transportation system as it electrifies and what people are experiencing and what should be improved and what's good already and all of that stuff. I think it's really valuable experience. So yeah, thanks for being a part of it. I'll, I'll thank you for Kyle and for the whole out of spec team. It's really yeah, awesome. And you, you too, Ryan. Thank you so course, much for yeah. having us. This was such yeah. a cool experience. And like you said, like it's great fuel for my conversations. Um, I engage with the public all the time. We have ride and drive events for people to test drive EVs for the first time. And we just had one last weekend and I just could not stop talking about charging curves. I'm like, this is something I feel like everybody should know. So I'm really happy to be here and I really appreciate um, everything that Out of Spec has involved me in. Hmm. Love that gratitude. Practicing gratitude is so important. And I want to ask you both, if you were going to do this again and you couldn't take the Model X, what are the other options? Uh, what would you choose? Maybe I'll let Ryan go first. Definitely the Mercedes. Um, nearly as fast. And in my opinion, I think it's a bit more luxurious. I really love the interior of that car, but can't go wrong with any of them, really. I think they've all got really great strengths. I guess the, the Kia would be my last choice, but it's also about 30 grand less than all the other options. So that's fine. Why would it be your last choice? Um, it's not quite as nice. Uh, it's also slower. Um, and then the route planning is uh, the worst, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, how did you place coming back with the route planning rate first again? Okay. That's number one. Yeah. We did how, well. how did it? Who came in after? Uh, it was the Mercedes came in about 10 minutes after us. And then the Rivian was after that, I think like an hour or so. And then the Kia was quite a bit after that since the route planner was pretty rough. Uh, I, think the, I think the Mercedes was actually maybe closer to five minutes behind us. Cause they said they saw us yeah. like on the street. Um, but yeah, I think it was between like five to 10 minutes. So honestly, pretty similar results from like the race to Vegas. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I bet Mercedes will like to hear that. They're kind of coming in close to Tesla. Um, oh, that's cool. And now they're going to have uh, chargers, Mercedes chargers at Starbucks as well as Bucky's and other locations. Yeah, they, they have a new partnership with Starbucks. So Mercedes is really stepping in, you know to like build out a billion dollars worth of EV infrastructure and everything. So they're it's cool to see automakers really taking great strides forward uh, like that. Okay. Anything else y'all want to share about your journey together as team X 
to Las Vegas and back? Um, I'll say I will absolutely cherish these memories and I have the bracelet still that I made. Um, Team Tesla, I <laughs> put it right here in my desk. Um, not sure if you can see it. Team Tesla. So it was awesome. I'm so glad I got paired with Ryan. It was a great experience. Um, we got to know each other and he's a really big EV nerd and like really knew and understood all the specs. And so I really just didn't have to do anything. And I really appreciate being there with Ryan. <laughs> so thank you so much for willing to sit with me for 13 hours for two days in a row. Mm. Yeah, I, I had a blast too. It was, it was a ton of fun. Um, every time we do these races, it's so much fun and something I'm sure I'm going to remember forever. And Lacey was a, a great person to be with. As a first-time road tripper, she was curious, asked a ton of questions, and honestly, really great questions. It was really awesome to to be able to explain everything and uh, be able to uh, just kind of experience it and and experience that for the first time with her. See see what it was like and see uh, what she thought. Yeah, how fun! I love it. Oh, so, love it so much. And if listener, if you haven't seen the race to Vegas and then the route route planning back. Definitely check those out. They're long, but it's like watching a fun feature film and you get to see all these pairs of people figure out how to make it work to try to win. Um, yeah, thank you both so much for coming onto the podcast. I really appreciate it. Thanks for being willing to do this kind of trip with all these people and all these EVs. It is pretty fun. There's a ton to learn. And um, yeah, you bring your valuable, your valuable perspectives to it. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Francie. Thanks for hosting us on the podcast as well. Anytime, anytime. And thank you listeners for plugging in with us for another episode of the Out of Spec podcast. Hopefully you will see us all on another race to Vegas soon. My first one sometime in the future, I guess. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Drive safe, stay charged, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.